Hey, what's up, guys? This is going to be a fun one. It's going to be very quick, though, because it's just the intro section to anti patterns in Elixir. So it'll be fun. Um, the next three sections, um, they're going to be good. They are going to be good. So what's up? Let's see if chat is working. Nope. I need to figure out a better solution. But all right, so why don't we just go ahead and jump right in? I'm going to open up Safari. And we'll go to elixir-lang.org. And I should probably show my screen. There we go. Make this a little bigger. And we're heading over to guides over here. And we finished up the basics and now we're going into the anti patterns. And this is going, this is a short one. So is meta programming, but I figure it'll be fun. We'll get anti patterns out of the way, go right into meta programming, and then we'll do mix and OTP. And I think I have another great idea for our next, once we run out of these guides, um, yeah, see, this is a very short introduction. But we're going to read it, and even if this is a short video, it will be a good video. All right, um, let's see. How can I make this better for everyone to read? There we go. That's pretty good, right? All right, sweet. I think that's good. So what are anti-patterns? Anti-patterns anti describe common mistakes or indicators of problems in code. They are also known as code smells. So like, I'm pretty sure I've said this on videos before or podcasts, I don't remember, but you get bad code smell <laughs> and you kind of develop that ability f to recognize bad code smell. Just the more code you write, the more bad code you write. And, you know, it kind of becomes second nature and you start to uh, have code smell. <laughs> the goal of these guides is to document potential anti-patterns found in Elixir software and teach developers how to do identify them and their pitfalls. And an existing piece of code matches, if an existing piece of code matches an anti-pattern, it does not mean your code must be re rewritten. Sometimes, even if a snippet matches a potential anti-pattern and its limitations, it may be the best approach to the problem at hand. No code base is free of anti-patterns and one should not aim to remove them all. It's, that's good to, to remember, right? The anti-patterns in this guide are broken into four main categories. We have code-related anti-patterns, so this is related to your code and particular language idioms and features. And then they have design related anti patterns related to your modules, functions, and the role they play within your code base. And then you have process related anti patterns related to processes and process based abstractions. And then we have, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we have meta programming anti patterns related to meta programming. So these are good to keep in mind. And these are each section. So let's pull this up. So we're going to be doing code related anti patterns, design related anti patterns, process related and meta programming. And so we are going to be learning quite a bit. So each anti pattern is documented using the following structure. So it has a name, the unique identifier of the anti pattern. This name is important to facilitate communication between developers. This is just like you want to you know, have a shared language, just like, you know, we have design patterns and things like that. It's just easier to communicate as developers, right? And then the problem, how the anti-pattern can harm code quality and what impacts this can have for developers. An example is code and textual descriptions to, illust uh, to illustrate the occurrence of the anti-pattern. Refactoring, ways to change your code to improve its qualities. Examples of refactored code are presented to illustrate these changes. An additional section with additional remarks may be provided. Those may include known scenarios where the anti-pattern does not apply. The initial catalog of anti-patterns was pro pro uh, proposed by Lucas uh, Vege and Marco Valente. Vege? I don't know. I'm butchering names here, but... 
So they wrote understanding code smells and I took a look at this. I was actually considering reading this and then I realized how long it was. But I think uh, what would be really fun, I'm just gonna open this up. What would be really fun here is this is like 30, a 36 page PDF broken into chapters. So under can understanding code smell in Elixir functional language. And what we can do, I think it'd be fun to just go through each section. So we can do the introduction as a live stream background each chapter. Cause I feel like this is about like 47 minutes of reading and we can go through the catalog of code smell for Elixir. So I think that would, this will make a really good live stream series. So that's going to be put, put away in my ideas of live streams. So we're going to touch on that. I was going to read it, but it is pretty long, but I think it will be a really good one to touch on. And so let's see. So additionally, the security working group of the Erlang Ecosystem Foundation publishes documents with security resources and best practices of both Erlang and Elixir, including detailed guides for web applications. So let's check that out. Let's see. This page was generated by document secure code and deployment. All right. So some guidelines here, secure coding and deployment guidelines. Cool. Worth a read. Web application security, best practices, more good stuff, never ending live stream material, I think. And then we have guidelines for security vulnerability disclosure for library authors on the beam. Also good stuff. Cool. So, this was really short. <laughs> so our little intro video, what are anti-patterns? It was a quick, quick read through. I think this was about six minutes long, but then, uh, next week, Tuesday, we will be diving into code related anti-patterns and this will be a good one. This will probably be close to an hour long. It's pretty long. It could even be longer than an hour. So we're going to be going through all this and it will be fun. So I will see you guys in the next live stream. I apologize. This one was so short, but I I'm looking forward to seeing you guys next Tuesday. Enjoying the video, show some love with a like and hit subscribe to stay updated to support me and keep the content free. Click join for memberships or pick up a course at elixirmentor.com and get free access to my private community. Let's jump back in. Peace out, dudes.